good afternoon. We are here in Golden, Colorado at the Colorado Railroad Museum. Yeah, we're here at the Colorado Crossings intersection of history. We're gonna go see some steam locomotives. We're gonna go see some galloping geese and we're gonna take a train ride. Let's go have some fun. Choo choo. There are over a hundred locomotives yes. that we actually get to check out here. Steam locomotives, galloping geese. We've got three of them. They were built right here in Colorado and there were only seven of these silver propelled cars actually built, like period. When we're gonna be able to like hop on the trains, we're gonna ride a train. I am so super excited. This is gonna be so much fun. We just kind of started our like personal tour here. And look at this, it got like the telegraph office in here. Oh, it's even like kind of like sending a telegraph right now. This is so neat. Like the quintessential old timey train office. So here it tells you what it is, like dashes and dots and like a dodge, gently press down and a dash is hold three times as long as you did for the dot. And it tells you what they are here. So SOS, man. Inside the museum, you actually can see here, all right, which is really neat. This is like the timeline of when the tracks were built here in Colorado. Um, I mean, look at the red line right here, which was done between 1866 and 1870. And it just kind of gets to Denver, goes up to Wyoming, and that's like it, right? But all of these other mountain tracks that were done in the years following. So that's, and it, look how fast though, just look how fast they all kind of got built for all of this, which is absolutely amazing. Now these guys communicated a couple of different ways, by sight and by sound. This is really neat because you can see the lamps versus the lanterns, where obviously red means stop, <laughs> yellow says slow down, and green means go. You get up to swing it and do all of that? Huh, yeah. pretty interesting. And then of course later on, as the highway became the mode of transportation and a way to get around, we use those same lights today. This is where you had the sound of the locomotives. They would have horns and whistles, and they would use like a long blast or like a, like a short blast um, to go ahead and get their messages across. So that way, if you needed the brakes, if you needed the flag band to know what was going on, if you had leaking brakes or sticking brakes, you'd, let, you'd be able to let people know. Also in here, they have a movie that's kind of continuously running, um, and it's got just different history about the locomotive industry and uh, here in Colorado and abroad. But this is also really neat over here. Look at this like miniature, I, is this really a miniature? I don't know, like it's definitely a scaled down model of the Union Pacific Railroad. Oh, this is a, okay. This is actually a scaled down version of one of the big boys. And this is for Union Pacific. Look at this mamma, jamba. Look at all the coal there too, wow. So Herbert W. Votel actually built this model. He started it in 1943 and then set it aside. It was completed between 1958 and 1962. It weighs 410 pounds, 133 inches long. And all that coal that you see in here is actual real coal that was in a big boy. And how many big boys were in existence? There were 25 big boys built and there are eight still in existence and running. Not too long ago, they actually had a big boy run right through Colorado here. Oh, it was phenomenal. And this switchboard here, this is actually how the traffic control for trains actually used to work. This was installed in uh, 1937 in Brush, Colorado. So it was all done right here. Somebody would sit here, maybe two people would sit here, and all these little lights would light up and yeah, pretty neat. So if you were lucky enough to get one of the uh, Pullman Palace cars, then you'd actually be able to have a really nice birthing area and look at this fancy china that you'd get to eat on. Mm, yum. Yeah, but Pullman revolutionized railroad like, history by making cars comfortable so that you didn't get jostled and banged and he had sleeping cars and dining cars and he owned all of those cars and then kind of rented those out to the railroads to be able to use. I think that's pretty cool. So obviously this is a worn down over the years uh, of what the Pullman car looked like uh, for the, the palace cars. But this picture here kind of tells you, this is what it looked like from the nice first class comfy aspect. This is something that just didn't exist before. Right, but man, Pullman set up systems to ensure seamless ticketing, like fresh linens, gracious porters. They really did revolutionize like how you were going to travel on the railroad and make it a nice experience instead of a really justly bad one. This is the Denver HO Model Railroad Club. Man, there's just a ton of hours of work has been put into this. It's 187th scale size. 
It's like 650 feet of narrow gauge in here. Narrow gauge track is 24 inches wide. Your standard gauge was 36 inches wide, but this is just like a total labor of love. And we've got to check out, I mean, look at all the trains in here, the buildings, the people, I love it. Yes, the train tracks definitely are really cool. However, I think the neatest part of this is how detailed it is, but also showing this is what it was like. I mean, this is how dependent these mountain towns were on the rail. Yeah, and that narrow gauge, they could not, they could negotiate tighter curves and run on a smaller right away. So they were perfect for the mountains and be able to bring supplies to those folks living in the mountain towns. Because there weren't any paved roads, it was railroad or nothing. Look what Morgan found. So for 25 cents, you can run the train. And there's another machine down there, for 25 cents, you can run the park. As you can see, an amusement park right there. Maybe Elish Gardens? I don't know. But let's put in the 25 cents and let's make the train go. Now we're gonna make the park go. Oh, super cute! A little train there too. Oh, and look, there's the police officer at the drive-in theater. I don't know what they're doing wrong. The details in this are amazing. Even down to the fact that this wall looks like a replica of a railroad car. So we just walked outside and this is what we're greeted with, which is actually a Union Pacific car. And it looks like we can actually get on, but look at this, you even have an old timey train right here. And you can hear the whistle blow. Look at the railroad depot. And then that was the office with the telegraph in it. But here, let's hop on board. All aboard. Ooh, bathroom, nice. Oh, this is as far as we can go. I love all the Christmas packages up top. That is awesome. I will say that hearing the steam engine blow and the bells ring, that never gets old. That's pretty cool. This is a railway post office car. So it looks like they started mid 1800s to carry the mail. Nice. All right, let's go inside. So this car is a standard gauge, but it actually was used from 1922 until 1967. And it carried mail between Billings, Montana and Fort Worth, Texas via Denver. And this was really, really used. Those are not real people though. This was the most influential train car in all of Colorado history. <laughs> Just joking. But look at that, when it was still eight off cores. Right on. So now we are inside the little red caboose and look at that, you got the coal fire oven. This guy was built in 1881 and the museum volunteers restored this. Look at this laugh board. I love it. And, oh, what's up there? couple of and there's also a couple of beds in here so that way you can catch some z's okay i gotta know what this bad boy is right here oh my god oh there's a sign so yeah, there are sign. signs next to these i really do like that but look at this thing what is it it's a snow fighter look at this picture because this is the same thing in 1961 where it was clearing between uh Leadville to Climax. The huge blades would move the snow and ice under the chute up top and take it away from the tracks. And when it didn't remove, the poor railroad guys had to get those by hand. Look at this coupler. Look at how huge this is just standing right next to me. And then just look up there. This train is massive. You forget how big they are until you can just kind of hang out and chill with the coupler. Hey coupler, you want to hang out? Yeah, man. Morgan, I just found all your future Christmas presents. Unless they got chocolate in the middle of that? No. I've never seen lumps of coal that big. That's pretty neat. Now you can find Disney anywhere. Check it out. Marvel. I don't know what this machine does, but hey. Well, you can definitely just marvel at it. Marvel and amazement. I'd say that's pretty marvelous. Now we've come to the roundhouse and the turntable. This is where the restoration magic happens. Right through those big, huge doors. Now normally that would have been during operating times where the engines and the locomotives would have gone and have had work done on them. But like I said, that's where the restoration magic happens. And if we can just pan around, you can see all of these, once again, these awesome locomotives. And then you'll see some guts over here. 
We just keep going. This is the turntable. This turntable, right? You can see all of the tracks here where you would point the train or, or the car in a specific direction. You would have them offload or onload. But these right here, and then there's one way down at there at the other end. These are assist bars, and two people can actually move this entire round table. This is called an Armstrong round table because of that. I just think these trains are so cool looking. I, know. I love the, the restoration that's done with it. I, and that never gets old, ever. How neat was that with the trains going past? Plus, we're about Love to it. ride one of those. I don't even know which one we're riding, but we're gonna ride something today. They also do seasonal and holiday train rides. Right, so if you have a Thomas the Train fan or you wanna do the Polar Express, the Colorado Railroad Museum can hook you up. And like through those big doors, I mean, doesn't that look like Thomas the Train should be coming out of there, like coming off of a nap or bedtime? Yeah, yes. so cool. Near Colorado Springs, there's Pikes Peak, which is a 14er. It's a massive mountain but they have the cog rail railway and this looks like an old one of those see man look at the signage it even says the cog rail route for manitoba springs and pike state how super awesome is that i love how it has like the you know vista dome so you can see all around that must have been really neat back in the day i love the fact that it's green glass i suddenly need a coca-cola in a bottle so we're standing next to this right here and you can hear the steam, you can see it all coming out, right? There's an actual temperature difference. I wasn't expecting that. And that, that's really neat. I, I wanna learn a little bit more. Let's see if we can do that. Look at all the coal there. And it's firing that furnace right there. Oh, 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 oh that's intense. It is hot. It is warm. Is. Oh man. How, how many hours did the engineers have to like spend just like in, in, on a typical trip? On a steam engine like this back in the days, they could be gone for 12, 14 hours, depending on where they had to go to. And wow. Then they would get called, take another trip somewhere else, and then they'd, they may be out for two or three days at a time. My goodness. And that's intense heat. I mean, it, yeah, they were not heavy, they sweated. All their body fat, right? Wow, off. that's just Mormon air. And look, Those there's the seat. Tough old guys. Yeah, they I mean, are. I'm getting pretty close right here, and I mean, this is, I mean, this is really hot. I mean, to sit this close. Yeah, for both of those seats. Yeah. That's phenomenal dedication. Oh. Getting people where they need to go. Fireman's job was to keep the fire and the pressure in the boiler up. The engineer was his job was to move the engine. So and then nice. I guess those levers there that would. <clears throat> so this is the throttle. This is what makes you go. Okay. And then the big bar there is called the Johnson bar. That's like the gear shift. Oh, you push nice. It forward, you go forward. You pull it back. You go back. All right, cool. And so then these are the brake handles. This controls the train brakes, and that controls the brakes on the engine. So on the the Johnson bar, right? Is mm -hmm. that so? When you you have it push forward, mm -hmm. you just keep it pushed forward the entire time you're going. Forward or do you pull? Yeah, you actually, you can do what they call notching back. Okay. Because the faster you go, the less steam you need. So okay. you start bringing it back, so you're, it, it's more of an economy kind of thing. You're using less steam, it's more, makes it more efficient. Okay. Nice. And then you said the fireman uh, sat right there because yep. that was his job is going. to keep all of this going. Yep. Right his, on. His main tool was that one right there. Right there. Wow. Yep. All, all, Gosh, the back-breaking work, I'll yeah. tell you. His oh, yeah. job was to put that in that hole. You probably have to start there, right? When you when you first start on the train and then you end up going to here? Uh, usually, yeah, you start out as like a brakeman. Yeah. Okay. And then you would graduate to become a fireman. And then from fireman, you could get promoted to be an engineer. Yeah. Nice. Here's another piece of the museum, and this is called the Railroad Garden. All of these little miniature trees are live. And then they've got all these really neat buildings, right? The trestle tracks, the bridges. All this is really cool. If we wait long enough, we're gonna look down and see a train. Oh, there's one right here. How fun is this? Oh, it's so quiet. Oh, look at the coal pieces in the back. Because you need those, right? Yeah. This is a pretty serene area. So they do have these benches that you can sit at just to enjoy it. 
Well, there's Thomas right there. Hey, you buddy. And look at this little guy. Oh my gosh, little train truck. Here you go, Thomas. Train truck, yeah. We have seen some awesome pieces of history here, guys. And we've also seen some of the inside museum. We've seen some of the outside museum. And we've been on board some really amazing living history railroad cars. Yes. So much fun. And now we bought a train ride with our tickets. They gave us this. It's time to go ride our train. Here's the train that we're about to hop on. Look at this. And it just goes down here for a little ways. And then also, not a part of the train museum, I don't think, but I love that Buick right there. That is so cool. And that's even cooler. This was the first class cabin in 1880. Man, all of these fixtures are original. The cloth seats have been redone, but just check this out. They've got a hidden Mickey. You can go all the way up. The chandelier is kerosene like fuel. This is so nice. Look, we're moving. See? Oh, it feels so cool. It's a very slow start. A lot of... So loud. It really is amazing how smooth the ride is. That never gets old. I love the whistle. This was such an amazing experience. Just to feel what it's like on an old-timey train, it's so fun. So come to find out, I didn't know this, we're actually going around again on the track. So you've heard of the train. This is what they call the galloping geese here. Only seven of them ever made. And this, when it was too expensive back in the depression to make, you know, the regular steam train, auto, you know, th these guys ran off of gasoline and they could go through the mountains and take mail and you know the lifeline to people up in the mountains before the highways were paved and all of that. Look at... Oh, well, what would a museum, even at the railroad, be without an awesome gift shop at the end? This is actually where you come in and you uh, redeem your tickets here and but you can also shop and just kind of browse around and there's some model trains and books about trains in addition to like some candy and stuff all right these are super cool so just some great ornaments for your christmas tree to be able to remind your if you visit here it's like the turntables right there yeah the turntable this colorado railroad museum golden colorado even a christmas train so it's oh. their little red caboose check 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 here are your hobo codes all right and you say like you can sleep in the hayloft kind woman and, and these would be outside of their homes and they would just mark them on fences and stuff and that way as you move from east coast to west coast you would know where keep quiet you would just know how to act when you got there and we had a great time. We saw some awesome locomotives, cars, cabooses, and of course, we got the turntable ornament for our tree, and it's got little cabooses and cars and locomotives around the outer rim of it. Yeah. It's so stinking cute. Let us know, guys. What was your favorite part? I mean, obviously, there is so much to see here. <laughs> we couldn't cover it in the entire video, but we tried to get all the real cool highlights for you guys. The museum part, the living museum that you can actually see with these real into... trains. Yeah, you can walk yeah. into them and on them and pull the bell. I think my favorite was the train ride. And the cloth seats, the fixtures, the hidden Mickey, the chandelier that really runs on kerosene. I wanted, they were hooks by the windows. I wanted to hang my bag on the hook. I didn't, um, but it was just, I was so great to be able to ride in that kind of history and to know that that was a first class car in the 1880s. If you guys will give this video a big thumbs up and share it. Let's go ahead and ding that notifications bell and that way you know every time I go live, or we put up a video. And if you want to see some more train fun, check out the video for Georgetown Loop. We'll leave it here on the end screen. But until next time, get out there, have some fun, and we'll see you on the flip side. side.